It is official. Idaho Senator Larry Craig giving up his seat in the U.S. Senate this after it was disclosed he pled guilty to a reduced charge following his arrest at the Minneapolis airport. Now Craig has implied he plans to pursue legal actions. Well, he said so, really. But since he already pled guilty, can he get it vacated? Can he get a do-over like we used to when we were kids on the playground? Joining me now are legal panel defense attorney Felisa Bermudez, Fox News legal analyst Mercedes Colwin, and former federal prosecutor Patrick Hanley. Uh, good to have you all. Patrick, how about that? You're the former federal prosecutor. Nine times out of ten, uh, the judge would say, get out of here. I'm not going to vacate this. You know what you were doing. It says right here, I now make no claim that I am innocent of the charge signed Larry Craig. But I don't know. I got a hunch, Patrick, that because this guy's a U.S. senator, a big name, the judge might say, all right, I'm going to let you try to clear your name. Uh, this is one of those nine times, Greg. Uh, the senator's got no chance of withdrawing his plea in this case. I, I think they're right. It's a knowing and voluntary waiver. His opportunity to get out of this case was in the beginning. He should never have pled guilty in the first place. What's really is stupid about this is that Larry Craig didn't consult an attorney, and I think a half-decent attorney would have said to him, hey, let me talk to the prosecutor. I can make this go away. If you were a prosecutor and you saw this, tapping a foot, exposing a hand, but no overt solicitation, no overt act, you wouldn't prosecute this case, would you? No, Greg. I'd say get that out of my office and get me a real case. Uh, the evidence in this case is weak. And uh, Mr. Craig or Senator Craig's uh, actions are open to several interpretations. This is not a good case. He should not have pled guilty. And why he thought this would just kind of go away and slide under the rug uh, is, beyond, is beyond me. You know, he pleads guilty to the lesser charge of disorderly conduct. I looked up the Minnesota, Minnesota statute. It is conduct that, quote, will tend to alarm, anger, or disturb others or provoke an assault or breach of the peace. <laughs> I mean, that, tapping your foot doesn't constitute that, does it? No, it doesn't. The disorderly conduct uh, is kind of a throwaway charge in the state system and what the government will often let defendants plead to when they just want to get the case over with. Senator Craig should have fought this case from the beginning. The evidence is not sufficient to convict him. If it's anything, it was attempted, uh, an attempt right. at some type of conduct, if anything at all. He should have, he should have not pled guilty. Oh, he it, should have consulted a lawyer. It was profoundly stupid, and if you're going to be that stupid, then maybe you deserve to lose your job. In contempt of court, disgraced former North Carolina District Attorney Mike Nifong will spend just one little itsy bitsy day behind bars for his mishandling of the Duke Lacrosse false rape case. Superior Court judge says Nifong willfully made false statements about DNA evidence that may have cleared the three accused players earlier. But is this the end of his legal troubles? Is it fair he does a day in jail? To our legal panel once again to discuss this, uh, defense attorney Felisa Bermudez and Fox News legal analyst Mercedes Colwin, former federal prosecutor Patrick K. Hanley. Patrick, uh, to you first. Nifong single-handedly ruined the lives of three young men. He knew they were innocent. He trumped up evidence against them, and he hid exculpatory evidence. Come on. It's not fair he does one day in jail for that, is it? No, that's actually right, Greg. As a former prosecutor, I'm appalled by Nifong's conduct, and I think very shortly he'll be swimming in lawsuits. But whether or not anything beyond a civil action comes out of this is, is really a question. I guess it's possible. Uh, that the U.S. Attorney's Office could bring an action against Nai Fong uh, for violating the civil rights of the Duke lacrosse players. But remember, he's got absolute immunity for his role when he's acting in his role uh, as a, as a prosecutor. Patrick, it's even worse. I mean, it's pretty clear now that he didn't care about these three guys. All he cared about was getting reelected, currying favor with the African American community in uh, among his constituents. And in Durham, that's a very large community. Isn't this obstruction of justice? And shouldn't he be in the docket for that? Greg, I'm with you on that, and I agree with Mercedes, but I'd like to see the U.S. Attorney's Office file a violation of the civil rights of these Duke lacrosse players mm -hmm. and bring criminal charges against Nifong for that. Not bad. It would be a bigger stage, and it would make more news. Uh, but at the same time, you've got to remember that most prosecutors out there are doing their jobs. They're doing it for, for less, play, uh, less pay, and they're doing yeah. their very best. We don't want prosecutors to thinking that they have to check 
and think twice about every move they make for fear right. that they will be prosecuted criminally or civilly. All right, I think we all agree that he should be prosecuted federally for civil rights violations as well as on a state level for obstruction of justice. Well, the Oscar, probably the most prestigious award the star can get. Now, the Motion Picture Academy of Arts and Sciences is trying to stop the public sale of two Academy Awards given to actress Mary Pickford and another one by her late husband that are in the hands of his second wife's heirs. Now, the Academy claims it has the right, under a contract, to buy the statutes for uh, 10 bucks a pop. Can that be? A far cry from the half a million bucks for one allegedly demanded by the heirs. Is the Academy being greedy or just trying to maintain its awards prestige? Do they have a legal basis? Back now, our legal panel, Felisa Bermudez, Mercedes Cohen, and Patrick Hanley. Hey, Patrick, come on, let's go back to our, our law school contract class, contract of adhesion. If both parties aren't in an even bargaining position, then it's a, a contract of adhesion and unenforceable, right? That's right, Greg. I, I attended that contracts class, and I have to also ask, <laughs> doesn't the Academy have something else the, that they could do that's more important than this? Plus, as I understand it, the uh, Best Picture uh, Actor or the Best Picture Oscar for Gone with the Wind was sold some, times ago, some time ago to a famous actor. So yeah. this is not the first time an Oscar has been sold. I understand why they want to maintain the luster of the Oscar, but come on, paying attorneys and getting attorney's fees for suing people, and unless that contract, as Mercedes I'm sure knows, unless that contract prohibits the sale uh, to the heirs and assigns of right. Miss Pickford, I'm not sure it's enforceable. And 